welcome again to Postcard and to Ligi Banks and uh, we're still in Portugal. He's still in uh, Poprad, which is uh, uh, capital of the province uh, or one of the provinces uh, in Slovakia. And it um, it's very apposite because I've been speaking to a mate of mine who's in Bratislava, that's the capital, which is uh, in the soft part um, of Slovakia. They don't get minus 17 degrees there. Uh, Lee's still complaining about that. And he's complaining. Are you not? Do you like minus 17? It's beautiful. It's snowing again. We've got another snow drift. I'm pointing to the window so you can see it. That white isn't light, that's snow. Oh, right, there you go. Well, it's the first time we can see your face in, in weeks. Tell it to stop snowing. Oh, have you seen the COVID there? Uh, yeah, it's coming on. You're not going to go full Taliban, are you? Yeah, I'm growing <laughs> it as long as I can. I'm going to see how long. I don't like it. I don't like it. I won't shave it off. But it's like the last opportunity, really, to grow a full-blown beard. I want to be like Zing Zing Top or have a big wobbly beard like that. Oh, yes. I want a very wobbly beard like that. Yeah. Well, it'll come in useful for next Christmas. By that time, it will be white. Oh! Oh, he's so hurtful. Honestly. He tells me all, all the time he likes it, and all he does is insult me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> right, we're going, to, we're going to start our dissertation today. And Don't get everything yet. Well, we've got, we've got lots of rants, put it in those terms. Um, and, um, lo, let's go in for it, right at the deep end. I uh, insulted Alpro last week. We're going to insult Beckel or Beckel or Beckel. Yeah. Now, that's three languages for you, English, Portuguese and Spanish. And yeah. they're all over the place. And um, I've got to confess, Lee, I'm on a diet and I've oh, got yeah? to take, oh yes, I've got to take various things and um, and basically it's dead easy diet. I can't eat anything. Uh, it's all banned. But one of the <laughs> things that I can eat is, uh, well, it, wheat is not a good idea. Uh, I'm becoming almost a, a vegan, a vegan. Uh, no, it's a vegan in, in English. Vegan, yeah. uh, and uh, that's one of the things, although it's naughty, that's been recommended. Now, I'll hold that up there. Yes. Now, this is typical of packaging, and we had to go up packaging with Mr. Alpro, even though he's got a good product. So, yes. as, uh, Mr. Bakel as well, except uh, it's misleading. Now, you look at the big letters there. What do they say? What comes first to your mind? Uh, apart from the name, of course, it's olive, which is good for you, and 100%. Those are the things that hit you when you walk past the shelf on a super, in a supermarket. And 100% it, olive oil, does it say? That's right. It's rubbish because underneath, in Portuguese, I will read it, com un toque de aziete, which means a splash of olive oil. My goodness me. So if you look at what's actually in this thing, uh, yes. it's uh, mostly girasol, girasol. What's that? Corn, no, the battery. corn oil. I'll keep you going. Yeah, well, <laughs> literally. Uh, now, that is not necessarily good for a diet. Is it? No. Technical reasons, I won't bore you. Yeah. But when you, what's selling that product is the fact that olive oil is good for you. But when you look at the constituents, the maximum olive oil is between 6 and 8%, reading the back of the carton. My right. goodness me, that's nout as we say in the north of England. Uh, and it's the same with Al Alpro in one sense, because there's only 2% almond in Alpro almond milk. Mind mm. you, if you get too much in, it's not very nice tasting, so maybe they've got an excuse. But there we are. Well, we have not if they claim it. Well, that's true. But I mean, we're so careful as journalists to get it exactly right. And we are taken to task if we get it wrong even a bit. They are getting away with murder with things like that. It is not olive oil, margarine. It is traditional margarine with sunflower oil. Let's be honest. What should we do about these things? In the, in the, in the fairness of being a journalist, I have to point out, uh, it's not necessarily true that Afrol or whatever it's called 
and Deco are actually murdering people. Well, um, you never know. I mean, what's going on these days? One has to say, but no, it's unfair. We have pointed out on earlier editions of, of the rant uh, that everybody should really, when you go into a supermarket, spend time uh, mm. reading the, the small print because that's how we get to the truth. But we don't always have time. And the other thing we've given a tip about, of course, is always look at your feet. In other words, when you get close to a stand in the supermarket, bottom shelf always, that's where they hide the bargains. Deliberately. Ooh. So always look at the bottom shelf, that, but not, not to your eye line, or sometimes the top shelf that you can hardly reach. So that's a tip. If you want the real bargains, go where it's hidden. Uh, well, but the problem is the grannies don't like that because they can't bend down. No, they can't bend down, but they can't get oh, up. Oh, no, don't, don't talk about grannies bending down. Oh, that is the worst sight you could ever get, particularly in Slovakia. Grannies <laughs> bending down. Honestly, how can a granny bend down, get her head on the floor with her legs completely straight? I couldn't do that when I was 17. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> They fit, they've had a tough life, Lee. They're not sed yeah. seden sedentary as we are. No, I don't, yeah. And the old as old smell of germaline. Does he? That, no, that's not germaline. It's what footballers uh, had, especially in the past, but still have, to uh, massage their legs uh, before going on the pitch, which takes us on to our next point because there is a... <laughs> There is a footballer, and I don't, yeah, Lee's having a cup of tea now, or coffee, or whatever it is, because he gets bored with football. But the majority of the world, the sane world, don't. Uh, and this week, a naughty newspaper in uh, Spain has found <laughs> out that Messi, unusual name for a footballer, South American, best footballer in the world, they say, oh, and has been for many, many years, plays for Barcelona. Uh, and his wages, basic wages apparently, have been released by one of the papers in Spain, and they shouldn't have done, uh, but they did, uh, and it's a quarter of a million pound a week. Now, there are quite a few footballers on that, actually, uh, but it's the additions on top of that. Now, that is a bit naughty being released, uh, or is it really? Is it no. good journalism? Well, it depends. It depends what they released it for. It depends where they got it from. It depends how factually correct it is. It depends what the. It depends what the motivation behind it is. Now, yeah, to reveal that, so I think it's all right. People reveal that Bob Dylan uh, has eight hundred eighty. No, he doesn't. One hundred and thirty-six million dollars in the bank. Uh, the owns houses all over the place. We we tell people how rich Donald Trump is. Uh, or how much money he's borrowed, and um, all that kind of thing. Yeah, it's, it's in the what it is. It, it's again, it goes, we talk about this all the time. It's the tears of journalism, not T E A R S, T E I R S, if that's how you spell it. And um, big, big, <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's 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 what not it's this isn't a case of. The public interest. This is a case of what interests the public, and people are always interested in what rich people earn. Um, the, the the argument about what they earn. Remember, I, you know, one of my best friends for a long time was actually George Best, and I actually earned in the early, well, the late seventies, more than George Best. Um, then he started to earn phenomenal amounts of money. When he stopped being able to play football, he started to earn phenomenal amounts of money. And that was in the public interest. And he didn't really care about being told that he was a multi-millionaire. But it's, it, if this bloke is earning that, the reason he's earning that is because his career is going to be very short. There are other things that happen, you know, later on in the career, right, some becomes a film star, goes on to be a trainer, whatever. Uh, but it's that amount of money is paid like to most people in the entertainment world, and sport is the entertainment world, uh, earn vast amounts of money if they get to the top. Good on them! Well, that 
moves us on very conveniently to the fact that uh, the boss's wage structure compared with the average worker, which is what, 27, 28, 29,000 in the UK at the moment, uh, the bosses, the top bosses, uh, are now earning up to 120 times uh, what their um, workers that make them rich are earning. That's mm. a big differential. Are they footballers? Should they be allowed to enjoy the life of a footballer? It depends, doesn't it? It depends which bosses you're talking about. Your average boss in Britain uh, it earns maybe with benefits, etc., whatever, around about 180, 150 to 200,000 pounds a year, uh, which is probably about seven, six, seven times what the, the worker earns. The big bosses, and, um, you know, I, I, I've met some of them, the real entrepreneurs, of course, yeah, are earning uh, vast amounts of money. Like you say, it could, could be three, four million more, 10 million a year. But the fact is, what benefit do they bring to society? Uh, one example who I won't name, but I um, know very, very well, know his background, it'd be unfair to uh, expose him in this kind of situation. Um, it runs 183 businesses. He's owned 183 businesses. He employs staff. Uh, I don't really know how many staff he's got, he got but I know there's got to be two, 3,000 staff. Uh, that's jobs. That's money he brought into the country through taxation, through uh, every kind of thing, but the food they buy, that these people buy. He has helped develop the financial, the economy, economic situation of the UK. Now, he earns millions of pounds a year out of his businesses. Is that wrong? Is he, if I employed a thousand people, what, what would I, and the pressure, the extreme pressure that I would be under to, to keep those businesses running, even though you've got people running for you, how much, how much would I expect to earn? I'd want millions to do it. I wouldn't want 50 grand a year, 100 grand a year, I want millions. Well, I mean, he's, he's surprising me this morning. I thought he was a pinko socialist, but no, he's out there with the ultra top knobs that are earning a fortune. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a left wing pinko, except when it comes to money. <laughs> oh, yes. Practical, <laughs> practical socialism, it's called. Yeah, well, that's right. Yes. Like Keir Starmer, multi millionaire. Like, like Jeremy Corbyn, multi millionaire. Yeah, they're socialists. I've got a real rant coming on. I'm saving it, but I'm ready. Go on, go for it. Well, it just... No, because I think we're going to talk about this in a different... I'll do me rant, and then I think it'll lead you into what you want to talk about. Right? What about churches? What about churches and how much money they're worth? What's happened to churches during COVID? Why have churches shut the doors on people? They've shut people out of religion. That's it. <laughs> Uh, health and safety, health and safety. Not God will protect us, no. <laughs> health and safety. Then they have, why aren't they taking homeless people off the streets and put them in the church? Why don't they believe that God will protect them because of the good works they're doing when they're not doing good works at all? They're just bullying people. Right, I am dusty run. No, I, yeah, well, uh, I agree with you, absolutely. And I've got some yeah. further figures for you in that there's a, an Anglican... Um, a paper this week that's been distributed, partly leaked, partly distributed, that says um, they expect their congregations after COVID to go by, down by at least 20%. That's right. And therefore, uh, we are going to pay our uh, non-stipendiary, in other words, they don't get paid, we're going to encourage, rather, non-stipendiary stuff, um, men and women, to come into the church because we can't pay for all our vicars and we're going to close a lot of churches but craftily uh, they said uh, we're going to start off with a lot of big churches that were built about 150 years ago only built with a life of perhaps 50 years because they were built of bricks and mortar uh, and not traditionally like the big stone edifices and small that's Spanish isn't it the big stone edifices and small uh, churches that we love throughout Britain. They're beautiful yeah. buildings and they need preserving. 
uh, and stop converting them into private homes. Uh, find some money, uh, Boris, to help out. But do they need to find some money? Is the Church of England very wealthy? Uh, the answer to that, Lee, is yes. Uh, yes. If your congregations are going down, maybe it's your fault, as you say, uh, not getting involved uh, with the COVID problem, opening their doors. Some churches want to open the doors. Some churches want to give communion out, especially the Catholic churches. Uh, until recently, they've been really jumped on. But now Boris has told them, yes, they can open with social distancing, etc. cetera, still. So in that point, I absolutely agree. But should they be doing what the Sally Ann does, getting stuck in there? Well, exactly. I, I think the church is sure. I think the church has a very great and important part uh, part to play in society today. Um, it, it's it's not to do with um, and a belief in your own God, particularly. It's to do with the the reasons for churches to exist or for religion to exist. Religion, uh, in all types of religion are basically there, unless you're talking about some really strange ones, um, but Christian religions and similar are there to help people, to help people have better lives. Uh, the Catholic Church and the Church of England should really hang their heads in shame the amount of money that they have stashed away and in this crisis, the government, our government, is actually giving us our money back. It's going to take it back off us eventually. But the church hasn't done anything, as far as I can see. You don't have, you don't, you, you, you get idiotic priests going on about Captain Tom, uh, but not saying all oh, these COVID victims, yeah, here's a fiver, mate, that'll look after you. At least you go and get yourself a cup of coffee. There's only McDonald's open down the road because everywhere's banned. Why is McDonald's not banned? And the church should look after people. That's what it's there for. It's what it says it does. It doesn't. It shut the doors on people. It's taken religion away. It's taken hope and faith away. Well, I, I've got to defend a little bit because some of the churches are actually doing that on the street corners. They I do invite that. people in. And it's not talk the talk, it's walk the walk. And they are helping out, especially in some of the big cities. So well done, yeah. chappies. Yeah. But if you took look at the church as a whole, uh, if you wish in the leafy lanes, uh, yeah. there's not a right lot going on, Lee. You're quite right. Yeah. It's, it's the institutionalised churches that are wrong. Like I say, like the Catholic Church, like the Church of England. They, they have money, they have power, they have influence. And they should be using it for the betterment of this world not for the betterment of the banks that they put all the money in. Well, there we go. We Actually, I mean, it is linked uh, because we, we are talking about money and we've not touched a lot on COVID, but there are important things happening. So we'll link one to the other. Um, Portugal's mm -hmm. in a mess for the last fortnight, and we've mentioned this before, it's had the highest rate of COVID uh, in the world by a, a long way. Um, this is also, we've mentioned, is the uh, Brazilian connection because that particular strand of the variant virus is, is, is nasty. Uh, the numbers are coming down and the numbers are coming down in the UK. Uh, the problem being, of course, when numbers really start to fall, people will get too relaxed and it'll be off again and there'll be a fourth lockdown, which is the last thing that any politician wants. Um, but the politicians tend to not be very accurate with their figures at times because it doesn't suit them. We did point out Portugal's election and it was strange and non-coincidental that the actual uh, new figures of the high figures in Portugal weren't actually uh, announced until after the election. Goes on all over the world. Uh, we criticise America for not doing things right. Uh, and whilst on the COVID dollar theme, I'm going to mention Amazon. Because right. Amazon have been called out as being hypocrites. Why, I wonder. Well, 
Amazon backed Biden and the Democrats and encouraged them uh, and all their workers and everybody they came into contact with, postal votes are good. Uh, I wonder why, but they said they're good. And they actually mm. gave millions to help the Democrats get mm. postal go votes going. Mm. Suspicion doubled by the fact that now a lot of the workers uh, that are employees of Amazon in America, depending on which state you're in, but a lot of states now uh, want it being unionized so they're better represented. Uh, better represented. Um, and Amazon has stood up and said, well, you're not having a postal vote uh, about this, a postal ballot. Well, why? It's inconvenient. A lot of people can't get in to vote. Well, you're not having one. Of course, they've said that for one reason only, uh, because it suits them in their makeup of voting not to allow it. How hypocritical they, they supported postal voting and suddenly they decided not to support postal voting. It's, yeah, I, I, on the surface, it looks very hypocritical. And I personally have no explanation for why they've taken that decision. However, there is, um, there is a difference uh, between uh, a, 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 a vote within an organisation um, and uh, a vote within a, a country. Now, surely Amazon is in a position to actually have an email vote. Emails are, are, are just as traceable, in fact, more traceable and more accountable than things that have been sent by snail mail. Um, so surely these people are being allowed, to, if, they're, if they're working from home or they're <clears throat> in a distant country or whatever, they're being allowed to um, send a vote in on whether they should be part of a union by email. Um, I do not know whether that's factually correct, uh, but I promise I will look into that and find out if that's what it is. If it's more convenient in that way, why do people want to stick it in the post anyway? Is that because Amazon does all does everything by by delivery? You know what? What is what is the point of having a, a postal vote? We've seen the the chicanery went, which went on uh, over the uh, postal votes in America. And I do not mean for a second chicanery over uh, uh, how many votes were done and all that. But it did highlight the fact that postal votes can be tampered with. Um, and, and really, you know, the, the, the fact that there are so many court cases going on in America over this issue should be very interesting. But Amazon, now, don't, don't understand it. Hypocritical, stupid, bad publicity, uh, a, a silly thing. Maybe it depends on which uh, organ published this story. Uh, I know one of them, which is very right wing, that uh, published it, and maybe they didn't check it properly. I believe it's probably been done by email. But I'll find that out and I'll hold my hands up if I'm wrong. Yes, well done. Now, well done. Um, talking about hypocrisy. Um, oh, right. Yes, um, there is um, a lady or a gentleman, or purports to be one or the other. Dr. Levine, that Joe, Uncle Joe Biden has got in his cabinet, for a mm. better term. And um, it has been pointed out by a Christian newspaper the following. Uh, in discussing this, it says, and I'll read this, it's important. This is a man who believes he is a woman. Yeah. Right. What is wrong with that phrase? This is a man who believes he is a woman. In uh, days of free speech, uh, ha ha, uh, they just commented on the appointment of this man mm. who believes he's a woman. And guess what, Lee? Twitter and many other Facebook have taken down that organization which is a conservative Christian organization. That's an illustration. It's going on all the time. The conservatives are being got at, especially 
by the big boys in the States. Yeah, well, he, he, again, you see, you know, after uh, having been in the media in various uh, guises for uh, longer than I care to remember, really, um, <clears throat> the, the use of information like that is depends entirely on what the implication behind it is. Um, and that very often is the presentation of it. I've, I've read that, I've seen it um, in various places. And the simple fact is, it was done to, it was somebody who was, thought they were clever. They thought, the say that oh, I can say this because I'm simply stating a fact. No, there is no protection if the implication behind what you're saying is to ridicule, insult, attack, do whatever. What does it matter? What does it matter if this man thinks he's a woman? What does it actually matter? Well, can, can I point out two things very importantly? Yeah. We are now talking about thinking what other people are thinking. Basically, is what you said is what other people are thinking. Have they been mischievous, in other words, yeah, putting I this out? Have. I think in, well, in that statement, they have. Well, that's the police state saying uh, we are the thought police and there's enough yeah, going on of that in Britain because they have stated a fact. Let's take it a step further. We know the damage that's been done uh, in the UK, for instance, uh, by uh, clinics, one in particular, the Tavistock. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I by well, yeah. influencing young people especially to yeah. change their sex, um, to put it bluntly. Uh, yeah. And more and more evidence is pointing to the fact that this could be a serious illness that possibly needs help. So why can't we accept both opinions, the transgender community, why should they have protection when the non-transgender community does not have protection for stating what each believes is the truth? That is free speech. And for Big Brother, in this case, yeah. Twitter, to come along and get it out of the way and it's say illegal. you're shut down point. is you're, totally you're wrong. You're having a legal point. The legal point is this, it's very simple. What, why was that pertinent? Why was that pertinent to that statement? What, why was it necessary to point that out? Why, why it, was it done in all innocence? Was it done to enhance an argument? Or was it done to ridicule? I, I believe, like I say, having read it, it was done to ridicule and to, to point out something that um, is wrong. And uh, something that's happened to me this week, uh, very simply, with the National Union of Journalists, um, I, I got into an argument uh, with some people who took great offence um, uh, at a book which was written about the effects of transgenderism on children. Now, I, I, I am not right wing. People know that. Some people think I am, but I'm not. I'm, I'm very, I'm very, I walk a middle line. That, that's always been my job to walk a middle line, give facts from both sides. But I, I took exception to this writer being condemned for writing a book which, which uh, condemned um, uh, trans, transgenderism. Um, and this faction of the National Union of Journalists attacked me and ridiculed me uh, for having an opinion about this book. Now, what I did, I offered them, uh, very presumptuously, uh, the opportunity to write for, for the uh, Lee G. Banks Preservation Society, which is a year old today and has, has 75,000 readers. Um, um, it's, uh, and also the opportunity, after a discussion with you, to get them on and, and ask them questions. Both of us ask them questions about their stance. None of them, and these are members of the National Union of Journalists. They need to be allied to some form of journalism. None of them have agreed to do either. Now, that is a different story to the fact, was it necessary to point this man, you know, 
Do, do you actually have to say every time you discuss something about somebody and um, this one-legged man, this man who uh, only has one arm, this man who's been to... See, if you write something about somebody going to prison, this man is a criminal, uh, this man was fined £5,000 for so That's a different point because that's a warning to the public to be wary of this man. So just say this man wants to be a woman. But what's the point? Uh, what do you achieve? What does well, that achieve? I, uh, it's not, not a question of that and uh, achieving anything, in my opinion. This is, up to the, the, this is up to the courts to decide, not up to Twitter to decide. That is the problem. They are mm. the, the top dogs are clearly ultra left wing. They're closing down the opposition. Let me give you another point. Mr. Biden, in appointing these people, he yeah. is, if you wish, uh, siding uh, with the left because he is left and siding with the people behind him, who I believe, and many people believe, are seriously left. He isn't, he isn't, he's just left. But there's a big, uh, there's a number of troops behind him who are seriously left and controlling him, dare one say, even as a puppet. We've got problems here with Free Speech Lee, and we can't have businesses deciding what is free speech and what isn't. Furthermore, uh, Mr. Biden has now um, taken down uh, all the barriers, is promoting things like abortion, actually promoting them worldwide, not just in America, worldwide, as one thing he's done with the left-wing agenda, which is abhorrent to me and to many, many people, up to birth, I may say, uh, and including Down syndrome ch children, up to birth, if you're found to be Down syndrome, right, out with it. That is abhorrent to me, I've got to be honest. And other things that's happening in the real world, when you open the doors, literally, to having male and female, uh, not having male, male and female toilets, to have cross-gender toilets, you're opening uh, a can of worms there. Uh, and furthermore, in the sports field, he's actually come out and said uh, that a transgender person, uh, male, can compete against the females. Utter nonsense. The females would stand no chance at all. It is diabolical. It is insidious. It is wrong. It may not be the flavour of the month, but I stand by those words. Over to you. Yeah, yeah, a lot of those issues you've mentioned are, 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 are the things that they're not becoming law. They're, they're, like anything else, the, the, the right-wing media in particular tend to jump on things that are just new to this conversations or, or think tanks or and, and present them as new. That, that's wrong. That's the wrong thing to do. Um, if, in fact, Biden is saying that uh, uh, abortions uh, can, should be carried out on uh, people up to the date of birth, then it goes against every constitution there is. And I can't see the law being changed to that immediately or in the very foreseeable future. Lee, it's been existent in many states of the, U, uh, of the United States for uh, three or four years. And this is what they are saying, and Miss Harris, Miss Harris especially. It should be stopped. It should be stopped. It, it, it's illegal in many parts of this world, and uh, certainly in a, in a great deal of America. Um, but, you know, yeah, all those things should be stopped. It, 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 it is wrong. It is just a wrong thing to do. Going back to the original point on whether... Uh, <clears throat> whether private businesses have a right to decide what goes on their uh, their uh, their presentation to the general public, um, if if you want to control Twitter, if you want to control Facebook, buy millions and millions and millions and millions of shares in that company and have control. I get a certain amount of control. That's the way it is. 
Uh, people have been complaining recently, over the, well, certainly over the last decade, that um, the newspapers uh, are publishing the wrong thing. Now, the public don't have a right to tell me what to publish on my website. They don't have the right to tell me when I was night editor at uh, a morning newspaper what I should publish. They vote with their feet or with their money. They decide they want to read what I publish uh, and what newspapers publish. If they don't want it, go buy it. Simple as that. Well, um, no, I agree absolutely, Lee, but we're yeah. not talking newspapers. It's obvious to no. people whether they're right, left, middle. Not that no, there are many yeah, middle, we're but we're talking about these independent companies that are yeah. using their might. It's social media. Let yeah. people have a shout. It isn't social media. Social media is a told me this is the misconception of social media. Social media is private companies out there to make money that have get, that made a, an incredible rod for their own backs when they decided to sell it as the voice of the people. There is no voice of the people on social media because, and there's one reason now, and this is why things are being taken down, nothing to do with politics particularly. It might be the political makeup of the board. It might be the political makeup of the owner. And it might be that that's the presentation they want to give. But now the social media giants are being forced to act as publishers and be responsible for what they publish. Therefore, like any other publisher, whether that's a publisher of books, whether that's a publisher of television uh, uh, news or television programs, they are responsible for what they put up on that wall. And the main reason this has happened is because of the abuse the general public carried out on social media where they thought it meant you can just say anything you want, you can just say what you want, you can insult who you want, you can accuse somebody of being a paedophile, nothing will happen to you, of course it will. That's the sort of thing that has created this clampdown on social media and made them have to act like publishers. That's what is happening. Well, uh, it's been interesting then this week in Poland, they've just passed a law uh, which will enable them to minimum fine $2 million if um, the social media concern shuts down things unfairly. Well done, Paul. Unfairly. Unfairly. Hmm. It would have to go to court. They say, you know, let's, let's just bear in mind the, uh, the, the, uh, the published um, uh, politician who has muted this is very right wing incredibly right wing. Uh, his attitude towards gay people is probably one of the worst uh, attitudes towards gay people, um, except when he hasn't gone as far as throwing them off a roof. Um, and he has got, which on the face of it is a good thing. He's come up, remember Poland's just over there for me, it's like 20 miles away. And um, he has come up with a very good, on, in the, on the face of it, plan, where if you get something taken down by social media, you can then, A, demand to put it back up, get it put up, back up, and B, if they won't put it back up, then go to court uh, and get it reinstated or get compensation or get the company fined. Now, the problem with that is every idiot and donkey who's got a social media account, who wants to say anything they can think of that is racist or hateful, will all be going to court. And the courts won't be able to operate it. It's a ludicrous, it's a ludicrous way for, for the president of any country to act. He's going to jam-pack his courts with people who, 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 who think they can change the way of the world. Any publisher has a right to decide what they publish. The public do not have a right to decide what a publisher publishes. They have a right to buy it, read it, or not buy it and read it. That's, that's the, that is the way it works. And unfortunately, uh, the social media has been hoisted by its own petard and tardiness and uncaringness. Moving swiftly on.
because uh, time is running out. Um, there is a union, a big union. Strangely, the teachers' unions in Britain um, change their colour, change their names um, every other week, it seems. The biggest union is the NEU, the mm. National Education Union. And uh, yeah. they've got a banner headline. I'll read it for you. Uh, it says, we operate as a union uh, for the benefit of teachers' support, mm. staff, leaders, and children. Yeah. Now, that riles me as an ex-teacher a little bit. Mm. Because who comes first and who comes last? Well, the children come last. Yeah. Don't like that. No. It's a very strong, if you wish, left-wing union. They'll deny that. But it is. And one mm. of the decisions that has come out this week is that they're encouraging their teachers not to have the vax, not to go back to school early. Don't have the vax. Mm -hmm. And um, that is interesting, if not wrong. Mm. Is, you say, well, yeah, what happened to the NUT? Why did they change it from the National Union of Teachers, NUT? Because everybody called them nutters. And it, it's, <clears throat> you know, it, it just was such a horrible thing. Now, I agree with you entirely. I have, I have very strong feelings against, uh, about teaching. And I've come up against teachers with this, and I've never found a teacher who agrees with me. And that is very simply that if a child doesn't learn, that's not to do with the child, that's to do with the teacher. And that's because teachers have so much else that they put before uh, children. Look at universities now, where you pay a fortune, you've already paid for your child's education, don't forget, then you have to pay again. And then your kid has to like take a massive loan, uh, which which kind of, some people carry for the rest of their lives, and yet they don't actually get taught anything. They stay at home looking at the computer screen. But this isn't in COVID. This has been going on for decades. That's not teaching. That's taking money for people to and trusting people to go and learn for themselves. Teaching is the art of making people better. It's also the art of making people the cogs of society. Now, I'm not sure that that really is what teaching should be about. It should be about making people better, just like the church should be about making people better. It should be something that creates good people, not cogs, and not people who are massively in debt, and people who've not learned anything. Talking about social media, look at the spelling on social media. These are people who have all been to school. Probably most of them have been to university because anybody can go to university now and look at the state of what they write. I am, I am campaigning at this minute about all these people who go and self-publish a book and, and, and claim that their authors, they go on, what's it called? The chase, and as they're into me, what do you do? Oh, I'm an author. No, you're not. You self published a load of rubbish. That is based on one simple fact. Somebody sent me a copy of their self published book to review. This is the third word in the beginning of their opus that's made them such a famous author. They say it was raining today. The third word, raining, spelled R E I G N. I am ah. Now, if that is the, if that is not lowering the standard of literature and learning within our society, then something has to be asked. But also, it has to be asked: Why are teachers letting people get away with that? Well, what? How? Which teacher told them that that was the right way to spell reading? That's outrageous. Well, there you go. Um, things have changed uh, completely in education. Uh, we recognise that and not always for the better. Uh, Lee, apparently uh, 17%, that's all of people getting the COVID. In other words, they've got the symptoms. 17% yeah. uh, are actually isolating. The rest are saying, beggar it, I'm going back to work. Uh, people are making... Uh, 
let's say inverted commas, excuses about that and say, oh, they've got to go back to work. Um, really? 17% people, the rest of them are being socially unacceptable to the vast majority of people in Britain. Uh, going mm. back to work and spreading the disease, they have to go back to work. Interestingly, mm. at the same time, somebody did another survey saying, why do people go to work? Why do specifically women go to work? And top of the list, equally, practically, was they need the brass and they need social contact. They go to work for a good chat and mm. the social contact. Now, that's interesting because um, it's, again, Mr. COVID has opened a can of worms in this. Uh, people are being uh, led to go back uh, to work very quickly or choose to go back to work very quickly. Essential workers has become the flavor of the month and maybe it's not always, as we've covered in the past, really essential work. There they are going back, some people say, and not looking after their kids, which they should do, especially when they need home schooling at the moment. Now, it's a pretty selfish at attitude. Oh, I've got the disease coming on. I need to go back to work. I would say there's not all that many people in that category. Yeah, they're going to suffer uh, because they're not going to be earning as much. But if you take childcare uh, and nursery care out of that, it is fairly marginal. A lot of people are going to work because of social, social, socialising, social. Yeah, that's right. Is, is work a place where you go to have a chat? I don't know. I, yeah. yeah. It is. It's people meet the wives there or the husbands. People meet boyfriends again. They make really good friends. So it is a, there is a grand social aspect to, uh, to actually going to a place of employment. Um, it, but is, is that what it's all about? There is something we discussed many weeks ago and predicted uh, on, on this kind of thing uh, has come out this week. Um, uh, the, uh, the population of London has dropped by 20% because people are moving out. Yeah. Uh, that means that uh, properties are becoming empty, uh, uh, that uh, office blocks are being abandoned, not not literally, but they, you know that is what the the dystopian future looks like in this. Um, people, it goes back to what I was saying: being a cog in the wheel. We are taught from school days to be a cog in the world of the perpetuation of the economic system that is a uh, big business, Britain, and every other country. Now, do we need to be that? Is this not the time where everybody talks about the resetting of the world? Well, why don't we reset the world in our own favour, which is look at different ways of earning money and, and not necessarily being a big or being a small cog in the big wheel of society? There are other things you can do. And, you know, bet, bet you've got neighbours. So if you're working from home, um, then you can say, I, I, I worked from home for 20 years uh, and um, I uh, live, uh, live for most of that in, uh, in a very small uh, village in the, middle, in the middle of nowhere. And I had neighbours um, and I didn't like them. Uh, so I didn't actually have any conversation with them. But generally, people do tend to go on with their neighbours. There's your socialising, work from home, look after your children, make, build this incredible family existence and earn money. The money's still there to be made. We need it to re-perpetuate uh, uh, the, the, the society that we call Britain today. I'm not necessarily saying that's the best thing to do, but that's what we're going to have to do. Time has fled. Last question. Um, we might be able to talk uh, some uh, real common sense here now because we're both petrol heads and there are two items we're going to finish with once we've covered before because uh, the whole of England are now kicking back on these cycle lanes. In fact, one in 10 councils 
are made to change their mind for putting, after they put the blooming cycle lane in. Uh, Spain is just as bad, particularly with cycle lanes. They're putting them everywhere and where a nice dual carriageway had a nice free flow of traffic. They put cycle lanes so it's jams on the individual single lanes and Lee, as we've said before, the cycle lanes are empty. They're not used. Um, it's madness, but at least maybe with one in 10 councils in Britain, it's getting through. It don't work. Things have changed. Uh, again, we'll blame COVID. But more importantly of that, because we agree on that, I've got a picture for you now uh, showing a car uh, radio from America in the 60s stroke 70s, and it's fascinating. It's a picture, and if you look carefully at this, there are two twiddle knobs on either side of the radio, as we always fondly remember in those days of uh, non-digital. And on the right-hand knob is two uh, triangles, um, and they were for special reasons. Because in those days of the cold and not so cold war, these stations that are signified by these two triangles were especially there to give notices if there was a nuclear attack. Oh, Isn't that wow. fascinating? They yeah. knew more than we did. Uh, and they built in that in the 1960s. Well done, yeah. America. You can immediately yeah. turn to your white triangle if you suspect uh, things are happening dodgy uh, and get the up-to-date news of where the bomb is actually going to drop. There you go, you see. It's, it's interesting because um, <clears throat> my, my journalistic career, uh, uh, yeah, I was very young. I really genuinely was very young to actually have ended up on, um, uh, on national newspapers. I was, I was uh, 24, I think. Um, and in the uh, uh, late 70s, um, one of the stories, I did it for the Sunday people, I remember specifically this was for the Sunday people, was about uh, the fact that nobody knew that within the pubs, uh, in the cellars of pubs, uh, a strategic number of pubs had these sirens built in. And they would, the landlord would be contacted uh, in the case of a nuclear war or a nuclear bomb or a nuclear whatever and go down into his cellar and use these sirens to, to warn people of it. That is not as sophisticated as the American system where you just change your radio. That's fascinating. And uh, yeah, well, I, I worked, uh, one of the major jobs I did at the beginning of my career was Margaret Thatcher's was work on and ridicule and and attack Margaret Thatcher's uh, protect and survive document. Um, I did a big feature for the Sunday Mirror on that. The only story I ever did for the Sunday Mirror, not why they didn't take me on again. But anyway, it was really good. Uh, I did it for the Sunday People. I did it for the Evening News. I did it for all sorts, and we ridiculed it for the simple fact that what Maggie Thatcher said. These, I'm putting the words in her mouth when it wasn't really her, but in principle, she said it, she was a big head, was if a bomb goes off, jump in a ditch. If a bomb goes off, take your doors down and put them against your table. If a bomb goes off, <laughs> don't go out for a couple of days. And it's off like that. Now, that isn't sophisticated either. That car radio is brilliant. Yes, top, top spot for that. Well, we're finished. And uh, you go back to, well, time has fled and um, you've got a, a lot of work to do, I understand, um, because uh, apart from that, uh, oh. a secret, ladies and gentlemen, with the lockdown uh, over there uh, in the far off east of Europe, uh, well, you can't do a lot. We can do quite a lot here, surprisingly. We can walk and we can go to shops, well, as long as they're supermarkets. There's only one thing you can do, mate, is that walk 100 metres every day to Lidl. How sad is that? And you go every day, don't you? You get a kick out of it. It's the only exercise I get, going to buy some little wine. We, we found a house 
in Spain that we want to buy. It's absolutely beautiful. We can afford it and everything. We can't get to see it. Uh, so we can't actually buy it. But it has this absolutely glorious marble uh, a wine cellar. And um, to fill the wine cellar, it must contain about 500 bottles. But when it's out a little, we don't have to spend a thousand pounds. Oh, yes, you, you, yes, we, we, we can now see that his, his aims in life. Lee, it's been a joy as, as usual. Thank you so much. Excellent. Yeah, we're really good. Speak to you next week.